Joining us now is Peter Morisi, former chief economist at the U.S. International Trade Commission and a professor at the Smith School of Business at the University of Maryland. Professor, what could the government be doing? What could the political establishment be doing that would be creating jobs in this country that they're not? Well, businesses need customers and capital to create jobs. The huge trade deficit with China and the regional banks still burdened by toxic assets. Bottom line, we need to either get China to revalue its currency or put a tax on dollar-yuan conversion to simulate its effect and get Americans making more products at home. We need a bad bank, a resolution trust to recapitalize the 8,000 regional banks so they can loan money to, uh, to uh, small businesses. And the president simply has to back off all of this increased taxes, more regulation, and finally do something about health care costs, which his reforms did not do. I mean, businesses find it too expensive to hire hire workers, they can't get capital, and they don't have customers. Let's go issue by issue, starting with the uh, use of Chinese slaves uh, to boost our profitability. A am I wrong, Peter, to observe that while GDP growth once may have led to job creation, that now by virtue of the fact that I can create GDP, that I can create output by either diminishing wages here, outsourcing to Chinese slaves someplace else, automating here and getting rid of jobs or financial gambling that GDP growth through gambling slavery uh or robots is good for profitability but doesn't actually create jobs. Is that a, a fair observation from my perspective? Well, you're not expressing it quite the way an economics professor would, but the bottom line is that most of the GDP growth has been on Wall Street from trading, and that doesn't create many jobs. It just creates huge bonuses. Meanwhile, American companies, if the economy is growing at 2% a year, they can cover that by essentially increasing productivity. You don't have to hire anybody. And they take all the money they've got and where do they invest it? In China. The president has created an environment that's great for Wall Street traders, and General Motors now makes more cars in China and sells more than they do here. Basically, this is the outsourcing administration. If we were to come to understand that and stop believing that, oh, well, GDP is our answer, and, and the president and Tim Geithner are managing for GDP when GDP is a function of things that don't largely create much in the way of work, or at least not good work for Americans, how do we shift from an economic model that creates GDP for the few to a, an economic model that creates great jobs and investment for Americans? We need to recognize that American workers can't compete with Chinese workers if the Chinese currency is undervalued by 40 or 50 percent. They're permitted to maintain huge tariffs on our products trying to get in there, and they subsidize both their exports and their import competing goods. Quite simply, if China won't stop, we ought to put a 40 or 50 percent tax on dollar-yuan conversion so it has the effect of an exchange rate appreciation and let them compete. If they, if they stop intervening in the currency market, we'll take the tax away. But let's give American workers a chance to compete. The other thing is he's dumped three trillion dollars between the TARP and Federal Reserve lending against bogus loans uh, to recapitalize the New York banks. But he hasn't done anything for the regional banks. That's why one of the things I know I'll get tomorrow morning in the Wall Street Journal is somehow or other the control of the currency or the FDIC has closed a few more small banks that loan money to small businesses. I mean, that's what this administration does. Close small banks and subsidize Citigroup. You know, he got the guy at BP fired, didn't he? Because he contributes to Republicans. Vikram Pandit, Jamie Dimon, Blank Fine, they're all still in their jobs, even though they caused more economic wreck and ruin yeah. than BP did. Mm -hmm. But they generously give to Democratic candidates. The president was up there raising money last week. Talk about cynical behavior. Heck, the GDP is up about $170 billion in the last year, and Wall Street paid out $140 or $150 billion in bonuses against $300 billion in increased profits. Heck, all the GDP growth is on Wall Street. Yeah. The rest of the country is going to heck. Yeah, you, now you're professor, now you sound like me. Uh, I, 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 Peter, do, what would debt cancellation at Fannie and Freddie to try to address the underwater mortgages do to the economy in your view? I don't know that it would do a lot for housing prices, but it would cause people to spend more money again. Uh, the question is, how would they spend it? These folks are underwater because they borrowed too much in the past and they can't service the debt. Are they going to go out and run up their credit cards again and create another crisis? You know, this president doesn't seem to get it. 
What Americans need are jobs making products that Americans are buying here, but are right now made in China. He has acknowledged that China slows American growth. He can do something about that. You know, he's going to have to run the printing presses like the Dickens to pay off all those mortgages, but he doesn't have to run, print a single dollar to deal with China. What it is, is it's easy to do what he just described. He just has Ben print some more money. Standing up to China is tough work. This president talks tough in a room full of his supporters, but you know, they're not so tough when it comes to standing up to their equal.